So let's review different types of graphs. So I'm just going to create, you know, a, the, the simplest possible three node graph here um, with the nodes connected in this way. And we know that these are our nodes. And that's what what's connecting them are edges. And there are different terms for these, but nodes and edges is what I'm going to typically use. So there are two different properties that are independent from each other that give uh, that give rise to four different types of graph that we're going to think about. And so the first property is uh, directed. So do the edges have a direction or not? Currently, the edges do not have a direction. And actually, both of these properties are properties of the edges. So the first question is, do the edges have a direction? These edges don't. Usually when you see a graph drawn, if it's undirected, you won't see arrows. If it's directed, you'll see arrows. So for example, this could be a one representation of a directed graph. So this edge goes in both directions. So if I'm at this node, I can move to this node. And if at this node is connected to this node, but this node is connected to this node. This node is not connected back because I don't see an edge going in this direction. Similarly, this node is connected to this node, but there's no edge in the other direction. So this is now a directed graph. And you can see that the properties of directed graphs are, are uh, to some degree, quite a bit more interesting than the properties. Well, I shouldn't say more interesting, but directed graphs are more complicated than undirected graphs. So even traversal through a graph, you know, if you take the edge, if you take the directions off this graph, we'll, I think we can agree that this graph is connected. So what do we mean by connected? I mean that I can reach all the other nodes from any node. So from here, I get here and here. I mean, this is such a simple graph that it's trivial to see. In fact, every node has the two other nodes as neighbors. But now imagine that I add some directionality to this graph. So now I can reach this node and I can reach this node, but this graph is no longer fully connected or it's no longer connected. And the reason it's not connected is because if I start at this node, I can't reach the other two nodes because they have an edge to me, but I don't have an edge in the other direction. And when we talk about directed graphs, there's actually both a strong connected property and a weak connected property. The weak connected property represents that if I took all the edges and replaced them with, essentially if I replaced all the edges with edges in an undirected graph, would the graph be connected? So this graph is weakly connected, but it's not strongly connected because I can't actually follow the edges from every node to every other node. This node can get to this node and to this node. This node can get to this node and to this node, but this node is stuck. If I start here, I cannot reach the other two nodes in the graph. Okay, so the first property is directed or not. I'll say or not. The second property is weighted. I have terrible handwriting. I can barely write. <laughs> Does that look like weighted? Sort of, like a fancy version of weighted. Uh, weighted or not. And what this represents is do the edges have uh, weights associated with them. Weight is usually some additive property, right? Like a, like an integer. So let's put some weights on this graph. Um, and in a directed graph, my two edges, now I'm in trouble here a little bit. I'm going to try to get uh, rid of this edge because I would have two edges going in either direction and those edges might have different weights. And the weights usually represent something about the process of traversing that edge. So think about a transit graph. This might mean the amount of fuel that it takes to go from this point in space to this point in space. Let's say these are cities and these are transit connections. So I can fly from this city to this city or take a bus from this city. Let's talk about flying. So I can fly from this city to this city and it consumes this much fuel. If I fly in the other direction, it consumes more fuel. Why is that the case? Well, maybe the wind blows that way and not the other way. And so it, it takes more fuel to come back. That's actually probably true, right? Weather influences uh, the amount of fuel it takes to, to perform a particular journey in a plane, uh, particularly when you're going in certain directions. Um, so these edges, same thing. So the, the weights are property of the edges that allow us to represent more interesting scenarios with graphs. Um, so when we think about social graphs, we might think, let's think about both of these properties in the context of a social graph where these are people and the edges represent something about their relationship to each other. So the weight might be something about 
the inferred strength of the relationship based on the social graph. So by the way, I'm pretty sure that Facebook is, you know, represents the graph as a directed weighted graph because they have so much data about our relationships with each other. So for example, I might have unfriended you, but you know, that's not a that's not a bilateral action. If I do that, you don't know. And so you still have an edge to me, but I don't have an edge to you anymore, right? So having a directionality to the edges allows them to represent something about the, you know, I mean, this is something that happens in real life. There are some people that we're better friends to than they are to us or vice versa. And so that's something about human relationships that we would want to capture with our graph. And then the weights could be something, like I said, about maybe they think the inferred strength of the relationship. So even in people that maintain a relationship in both directions, it's possible that, you know, this person likes this person more than this person likes that person, or this person, you know, is more important to this person. And it's just awkward to talk about, right? You know, uh, but you know, you guys know that this is true. So, so, you know, directed or undirected, weighted or unweighted. And so that gives us four different types of graphs. We can have directed unweighted graphs. We can have directed weighted graphs, undirected weighted graphs, and undirected unweighted graphs. Typically, what we'll focus on is the simplest case where I take the weights out, I take the directionality out, and all I do is I model nodes and edges. So nodes connected by or not connected by a single edge. This graph still has a lot of interesting things that we can do with it. So one thing that you can represent with this graph is adjacency. So if I have a map, I can connect to, and every node is a country, I can connect two nodes that share a border. That's a case where the relationship is obviously bilateral, right? If I have a border, two countries have a border, both of them have a border with each other. There's no notion of I have a border with a country, but it doesn't have one with me. That doesn't make any sense. So the idea of the graph being undirected makes sense. And then the weights, you know, maybe you could add a weight, which would be the length of the border, but it's not clear I need that, right? If I want to figure out, for example, if I can travel from one country to another country while avoiding a third country, let's say that I'm wanted for some crime in a third country and I want to figure out, you know, if I can travel between country A and country B without entering country C, I don't care how wide the borders are. I just need to know that there is a border, right? So that I can move from one country to another. And so in that case, this unweighted, undirected graph would suit me just fine for my for the life of crime that I propose in this short video.